Hi Shiva, welcome to Film Company in South. You are the executive producer of a lot of films that Metro Stockies makes. Yeah. Executive producer, na yena. What does the job description entail? Okay. So I see it more like uh, the sweeper position in cricket. Okay? okay. So you can be deep cover, deep point, deep mid off. Ba basically, you are there to cover a lot of things. Meaning. Executive producer and pair on the Weber company, Weber production versus Lorba Free I use Pandraga. So, if you were to ask a different EP, uh, he or she might give you a completely different definition. I'm going to stick to what I do at Madras office, yeah, okay, uh, or as the EP of my company with Shad, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, to start with, I think, I think the EP role that I get to play here is very similar to the producer's role in Hollywood. Let's say Spielberg makes a film for either Amblin or SKG, then Spielberg and Kathleen Kennedy would be the executive producers or Spielberg and uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg would be the EPs and then they'll hire producers for the specific projects. So if SKG were to produce let's say five films and whatever five other shows, there might be ten producers and he'll be the EP of all of them. So in a way the guy or the lady who brings in the money, who puts the whole project together, becomes the EP. Okay. And this also extends to uh, people who take shares. Like for example, let's say you make a film with a Stephen King novel and you're not going to pay him, but you're going to give him a percentage point. He might take an EP credit, okay. which means he's not going to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the production. And then you have the producers who handle the film. Now in India, it's Ulta, uh, SG or Mani Sir or Mr. Karan Johar, they become the producers. They call the producers. Because they finance them. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they are the ones who bring in the money. They are the uh, reason this film is getting made. So in India, we are used to calling them the producer. The producer. And the executive producer working under them uh, executes their idea. So I'm going to stick to the Indian word definition. But in Hollywood, I would have been called a producer. Anybody who's doing my job would be called a producer. Okay, that's interesting because I always thought producer na he's the guy who brings in the money. That's uh, that's that's right. But that that's right for the Indian uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the scenario. Yeah, scenario. Okay. In Hollywood, a producer works under an EP. EP okay. He works for a studio. Okay. So let's take uh, maybe just to make this a little easier, we, the Indian definition. But let's take a recent film that you have worked on. Shall we take uh, Chakachana Dawanam? Yeah. Uh, so, as an EP, from the beginning, uh, what did your role in this film entail? Okay. So, to start with, I think the EP's primary job is to have control over the budget. Right. Uh, to define the cost of production and keep contingencies ready okay. in case. Okay. That's the contingency. Right. And the whole budget making process in an organization like ours, because it's a smaller organization, it's not a studio, the whole budget making process also means that you have an understanding of the business. So you're, you're not going to uh, budget a film for 100 crores knowing it's going to get sold only for 50 crores. So step one is to actually define the scale of the project. And to define the scale of the project, you get a hang of the script. So the writer-director, he gives you a story and he says, hey, take a look at it and tell me how much it's going to cost. And tell me how much we can actually make it for so that we are not taking major risks. Okay, so let's step back for a second <laughs> because you were also a writer on Chekhatya Dhawanam. <laughs> so take a project where you were only EP. Are you there? No, no, I was an AD in that. Okay. I, I think Kartuveli died. Kartuveli, let's say Kartuveli died. So you, did, you were the only the EP on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Maniratnam and whoever... Uh, his uh, team or whatever it is, they give you a script yeah. and uh, you take the script and then you say, okay, this has sequences in uh, in Kashmir, it has five war plane sequences, Correct. it has uh, some mountain, whatever, then it, it, you know, all that. So you put together, it needs fighter planes, it needs all these other things. So you're, 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 you're looking at the script. And that's what you mean by getting a scale, Correct. Uh, sense of the scale of the Correct. project. Okay. Correct. Okay. And then you go to uh, your boss and say, okay, it's going to cost X amount of money. And he invariably laughs at you and says, no, it's not going to cost that much. <laughs> I'm not looking at it like that. So read it again. 
this is how i envision it so we break it down further and then we are able without changing the script of course ah uh, no no you okay. never do that i mean the budget is made for the script not the other way around okay at this point at least then you have a sense of how much it's going to cost and while writing we already had an idea of who the cast is going to be so we try to see if these two numbers mm. match you know whether it's viable so when you say cost it also includes the cost of the cast yeah yeah okay yeah so above the line and below the line right i thought i'll come to that in the next step so basically i come up with the overall budget and then we see the business potential of the project yeah and then if they kind of match and if it looks sensible to start that and then we say okay let's get into it okay. so that is step 1 basically then the ep is responsible for actually uh making the contracts with the chief technicians and actors meaning you speak to them on behalf of the company you invite them for a meeting with the director they get to know their role we work out their availability and then if those things add up then we discuss numbers and that for for each of them we already have allotted a certain figure we try to make sure that those numbers kind of match so this is what we call the above the line uh numbers so these numbers are fixed for the whole film and like, you're talking about right now the the dop the yeah yeah the above the line people yeah. the lead actors the chief technicians who are hired for the whole project so it doesn't matter whether i shoot with them for 50 days or 60 days or 70 days or 35 days they there for the film right so you know their market rate and you know how they're going to uh contribute and add value to your film and you just kind of balance all of that and uh fix their numbers so that becomes the above the line budget then if all of that is all right so usually typically you would say 55% of the film's budget is above the line and the other 45 goes to below the line which is your day to day uh, cost of shooting meaning your camera lights location charges food the vehicles the generators and uh, extras travel yeah extras and then you have the broader heads like travel which is not just for the shoot you also travel a lot for your recce and there are other technicians traveling for so many different reasons for purchasing yeah. and for post production so travel becomes a separate head accommodation becomes a separate head because even if you're shooting in madras you may be bringing people down who could be staying for months so it's also not uh, not a factor of number of shoot days so you you get into uh, the below the line cost which is like i said the daily shoot cost then travel accommodation food and art and costume which are kind of tricky because everything else could be pure uh, production related calls when it comes to art and costumes and even makeup and hair you know for sure that the director will have a say in it and uh, you you got to keep on polishing those numbers making sure the director's vision is reflected in what you're going to build or what you're going to purchase and then keep the numbers together so that's how the below the line numbers work out at this point an ep typically has a line producer okay so the line producer takes care of all these numbers who line producer works under you yeah okay takes care of the numbers not that anyway below the line numbers go to the line producer above line goes to you yeah okay so i tell my line producer hey we can't spend more than this on the accommodation for this person because your overall accommodation budget is this right and you can hire uh, 50 extras today not 75 as these guys are asking for so kind of work it out so the line producer takes care of all those that's why he is called the line producer the thing is at this point like how i got to read the script and i worked with the director and the uh, producer who's the same person in my case in uh, defining the scale of the film now i'll be working very closely with the assistant directors right to know their day to day requirements and for this you need to have a decent grip of the script because you don't want to be blindsided by a weird request that suddenly pops up you should be prepared for it if you already knew that something was there in the scene you knew they were going to ask for it rather than be surprised by it so you need to keep yourself updated on the script can you give me an example of like something that a request that that blindsided you in your words in cartwright it actually happens often even if you're right right prepared just just to get an example of okay um the cartwright is set in uh, kashmir 
so we worked on uh, shooting in Kashmir for months actually and for different reasons uh, it was proving to be difficult and just before we were about to get the permission Nuri attack happened so obviously they were not going to let us shoot a film uh, on a military base so we had already got the information that old Russian planes were available in Serbia okay so the mix how do you get this information no people approach you right people, okay. people approach you and you talk to them and you want to know what they've got to offer people approach you saying we have old russian planes no no people approach yeah. you saying you can shoot in serbia oh like that. Uh, like that like yeah. that okay, like a location uh, kind of thing yeah okay ah. it was travel masters ramji he yeah. he he offered uh, many locations and uh, i knew that he had said uh, this was available and which kind of matched the period that uh, we wanted the film to be set in. So uh, we started working on uh, that permission. The, the, the issue we had at that point was we wanted snow and we didn't know whether we were going to get it. In Serbia? In Serbia. They were saying you'll get snow in February. But we had so many other things lined up uh, that we had no uh, hope uh, to push it to. February. We, we knew we wouldn't be able to pull it off, so we des decided to take a chance and go to Serbia in uh, December, I think. November, December, late November. The thing is, we were so lucky that on the day we landed, it snowed and we shot the snow scenes. It was a short schedule and within two days we had to shoot scenes without snow and it stopped snowing. <laughs> we were just lucky. Now I'll come to the uh, part where I got blindsided. Because things went so fast, we also had to pull off some scenes with soldiers. Okay. That I wasn't ready for. That we didn't know we could uh, organize there or we had to organize there. And then we came to know that the gypsies, the you know Romanian gypsies who live in uh, Serbia, they kind of look like Asians. So we got them to don the Pakistani uniform and we started using them but I did lose some sleep over that now it's not a big creative decision because they didn't have any speaking parts right so that, that was not a decision at all we just needed people who, who could kind of match the look without costing us a bomb in both ways the money that you pay them for the shoot and if they ended up being uh, Caucasians you'll be changing their faces in post-production we didn't want to do that either yeah so luckily we managed to pull that off so you, you, you're prepared for uh, your day-to-day -day problems, but you end up getting facing new issues. Right. I'm not going to tell you where I failed. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have loved to hear that. But let me ask you this. See, you, when you go to a particular location, don't you know which scenes you're going to shoot? Like I was saying, the weather was unpredictable. Right. We, uh, we had covered everything. This was an add-on. Because you had time, yeah. you said, let's also yeah, shoot this Yeah, year. let's also shoot this. Okay, otherwise you would have come back and... Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, okay. Would have, we would have been happy, we would have called a rap and we would have come back. But suddenly there is an opportunity to can something else. The stunt team was good. Right. All the camera equipment was there. The location was brilliant. It was right for us. Right. We just needed this. Right. So, you've talked about above the line, below the line. You're talking about... So, basically, you make sure that the shooting produce uh, proceeds smoothly mm -hmm. even though it's anything but smooth for you uh, i enjoy it actually <laughs> <laughs> but, but your thing is basically to say maniratnam is has enough headaches of his own the rest of the stuff at least i'm going to take care that's your thing that's the idea yeah that's the idea of a that's idea. producer that's in idea. india that's the idea okay i think that's the idea of a producer anywhere in the world okay okay and you find these people sitting next to uh, Martin Scorsese and uh, Tarantino, they are, they are just there to make sure the director gets the stuff. stuff. Right. Yeah. Is there any creative input that an executive producer gives to the director? To be honest, there shouldn't be. Okay. Uh, but in, so Because in, it's your, you see it as purely a logistical job. It has to be. It has to be. It had better be. If I were directing and if an EP has an opinion, a creative opinion, I wouldn't appreciate it. Okay. Because it does come in the way of your decision making. I think you've got to be a tough on the numbers, though that's the rule. Because I used to be Mr. Mani's assistant director and I've collaborated with him uh, in his script. So obviously I will have some that's opinion. Right. That's why I tend to stick very close to the first study. You know, I keep first the first study by my side and I keep asking him, what are you planning? When are you going to do it? How do you want to shift? So I keep telling him my problems. 
the permission that I've got, the permission I don't have, the thing we I've already paid for, the thing I have to pay for now to make it available 10 days later. So can you make your plan according to what I want? So uh, it's that kind of a conversation that you keep having with the associate director. I think that's the that's that's the thing that you should do. So you don't you don't get into the thing where you know what this is sounding like like this hero is coming across like a very un unappealing man and you don't have to smile because I like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> One of the five people that like the movie. So uh, no, but I'm saying that if, you know you know that because you have a it's a fairly expensive film for your company because it, it involves logistically a lot of things. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's not like an Alepa day for instance, you know, which mm -hmm. is relatively contained. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're talking about a, a fairly big film in terms of scale, scope and things like that. But you're also talking about certain intangibles like which might have probably worked better if, if a film had been done at a lower scale because you know, you're, those kinds of, that's not your, your realm at no, all. No, no, Barry, I'm, I'm a I'm the wedding planner, I'm the priest who is performing the wedding, right? I'm not going to ask them in the last minute when they're about to exchange the ring, you know. Is, the, is this guy right for you? Is this guy right for you? That's, that's, not, the, that's that, not my job at all. Whatever I had to say about the script or about the casting or about the sets or whatever, anything right, creative, right. I've already done that. Okay. No, no. I mean, by the time I get to uh, two months before shoot, I'm done. So I don't talk creative at all at all so technically speaking if it if if it were not money Ratnam, with whom you have an equation let's say it's somebody else <laughs> no, i have an equation with him so i do tell him so no no you do have an equation yeah, yeah. Saying, let's let's say if it was somebody else with whom you did you were purely executive producer and you you would not even even if the script were completely something that you didn't agree with your job is only to execute the logistics of it that's how it should be that's exactly how it should be but i think a producer or an executive producer should walk into a film only if they believed in the script. Okay. Why? Is uh, that only if they trusted the director. Can't you still just execute it? No, I don't think that will work. I think you will not enjoy the job. And if you don't enjoy the job, this is hell. So I, uh, I respect the director a lot. Uh, in this case, Mr. Money. And with Shad, I like him and respect him. Yeah, he's, he's a friend, friend as yeah, well. Yeah, so, yeah. So, working with them is so a pleasure. So, you, you were with Shad in that, uh, this film? Surma. Uh, Surma, yeah. 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 So, wha so what happens is, is they also want to have me by their side because they know I'm emotionally invested in the film. I'm, I'm not a gun for hire. So I, am, I do care about what they want to say. And I, I'm, I'm talking about this from uh, the, the perspective of what somebody should do, not necessarily praising myself. I'm just saying, if you wear an EP, you better like the film, otherwise don't do it. You, you better trust the director, you better love the script. Okay, so just to get back a little to what you said like uh, a few minutes ago, you said that you're at the stage of a wedding planner where you know you don't really. So why should they care at this point what you have to say? No, but but to get to this point, okay, okay. to get to that point, uh, you, you you should have done all of that. Maybe maybe you're going to come to me and say, hey, listen to the script, and I'm going to say, buddy, I don't like the script. Then you shouldn't hire me. Okay, you know you should. If I say, hey, what if I knew you're a damn good EP and. I just want to get the logistics because it's a complicated film. I need like all these things. I don't know Shiva's a damn good EP. I need to like like you know, but but you don't like my script. But you would not be comfortable working with that. I would leave it to each individual to decide. I think I will want to work with directors I truly like and scripts I truly believe in. Okay. So are you saying that all the Maniratnam scripts that you worked on are scripts that you truly believed in? Absolutely. Okay. So that's that's your equation with with that this particular thing. What about Surma? Can you take us a little bit through that? Okay, basically because that's a very different scale from uh, like Atreveli Day, and yeah, also so emotional temperatures are different. More importantly, that was a studio film. Maybe that's a different example that you will like. Okay. Okay. So basically, what happened was I think Chitrangada Singh met Sandeep, and she liked the story. Sandeep, Sandeep Singh, on whose life the film is uh, right. you know yeah. written. So, Chitrangada is the producer of the film right. uh, for Surma. Uh, so, she uh, took the story to Sony and Sony loved it and they said, okay, let's get somebody to direct this. And then they brainstormed and they came up with Shad's name. I'm sure they came up with some other name also, but they approached Shad. And Sony doesn't have a production setup. Okay. You know, they're, they're, a, they're big distributors, they have the muscle to uh, buy good content and put it out very well, but they don't have uh, a team to run 
day to day production. So when they met, Shad, Shad said, we have a company, we'll produce the film. So then I was roped in. And this is Shad and your yeah. uh, firm. Yeah. yeah, so Shad sent me the script saying, they want us to make this film, do you like it? I liked it. I mean, it was a 20 page treatment. I said, it's brilliant. Let's go with it. So I met the uh, Sony guys. And then they asked me, how much do you think it's going to cost? I gave a number, they gave a number. So it goes to that process. Then we got into the above the line, below the line thing. Some of the above the line things, they took care of directly for copyright issues. Like they have to pay the uh, music composer, the lyricist and the lead actors so that they have control over the uh, individual contracts. Okay. Then everything else was to be executed by our company. So that became our responsibility. So th then the game is the same. I hired a line producer, I hired a, hired a production team. Then we got into breaking down the whole shooting uh, schedule and then divided the budget further and further and got it done. The thing is I got into writing a little later for okay. the same film. Okay. You know, they wanted some rewrites to be done. So I got involved as a writer also. So, so that's a separate conversation. But otherwise I served as a producer, as an EP fully. What are the skill sets that uh, an EP needs, like you know, because in most other film, uh, let's say you want to become a photographer, right? It's it's very likely that you played around with the camera, or you know, you have an eye for taking photographs or something like that. If you, let's say you want to become an actor, you probably discovered early on that you know you played a part in dramas in school yeah. or something yeah. like that. It's so, not a performing art, right? So it's not a performing art. So how do you, how does one decide that? Oh, you know what? This is my thing. In a funny way, it's actually a very humbling position you know right. you got to be humble you got to realize that during the production phase uh, during the execution phase uh, you are one of the important technicians but you actually don't matter nobody is going to buy a ticket because somebody was the ep of that film they'll do it for a cameraman they'll do it for an actor they're not going to say hey this guy is the ep i'm going to buy tickets and even Bharadwaj Jangan will ask you, what does an EP do? Because nobody knows what right, an EP right. does. So, so it is an irrelevant job in the eyes of... It's not no, an irrelevant the job, the, uh, because yeah. that's why I called you to the... No, 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 what is, no, no, no I'm, I'm just trying to say, it's, 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 it doesn't matter who does this job for the uh, ticket buying public. Right. So you're not in it for fame or recognition of that sort. That's why you got to like the script, because you are in it to execute a particular idea, Vision, a particular yeah. script and see that getting translated to the big screen. That process has to work. So I would say that you got to really love movies. Obviously, yeah. Uh, that's true for everybody. Yeah. But, but there is also a mix of the fame that comes with it that could be an incentive for the other jobs. Here, there's nothing like that. It's only about actually getting a job done. Right. And the buck stops with you. So you got to handle pressure. You know, you got to be slightly thick-skinned. I'm still learning. So, I, it's actually... Thick-skinned, uh, thick thick-skinned, why? Meaning, you you got to take the uh, punches. You got to take the kicks. You got to be the fall guy when things don't go well, you know. Like, it could be an individual who needs to be taken care of. Now, without naming names, tell me, like, <laughs> a scenario that you're talking about, let's say you needed X prop and the prop didn't come on time, things something like that. Like that. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Uh, because luckily uh, the actors and technicians who work in our movies right. are usually very passionate about their contribution. So they never give us any headache. And I, uh, we never, if we, you don't have to deal with silly egos. Yeah. So you are actually worried about how the film is going to shape up. And if something goes wrong, like a permission goes wrong or you uh, miss a particular date, then, then you got to be able to swallow it and uh, work on plan B. So I would say you've got to be really, really interested in cinema for the sake of cinema and then you've got to have a thick skin. And if you're actually going to talk about a skill set, I would say you've got to be a quick decision maker. Okay. You can't really sit on something for days. Would you also say you have to be a people's person? 100%. percent you got to be a people's person. I mean, there's another obvious thing that I didn't want to say, but maybe I got to say, you got to be honest. Okay. You know, you can't I, I know it sounds silly, but you you are dealing with a lot of money. You're dealing with you you have a, the pseudo power for a uh, you know temporary phase where you can decide on a lot of things, mostly below the line right. like services and other contracts that can go. And you got to keep your eyes open and make sure honest people are dealing with the money thing because you won't even know where it's leaking. 
so you 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 got to be very clear about those things you got to be a people's person and but that's that's really an enormous thing because let's say the food caterer contractor is making you yeah yeah you know it's not unheard of right but how do you find it out like <laughs> <laughs> you know you 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 rely on your uh, team members people who uh, take care of line production or production coordinators and your auditors you know you 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 work very closely with them all the time and you always keep the ads by your side okay because they are usually incorruptible okay you know, those guys are usually you know interested only in getting the film made so they keep telling you you know i got only 50 guys yesterday so don't pay for 60 you know you got to make sure those guys are involved in the whole conversation which is the most complicated project ever that you've executed as an executive producer i think i'll be able to name it in a year because we made pony itself yeah it's, it's, okay. it's, it's pretty good <laughs> okay so take me through all the films that you worked as as an executive producer uh whether with metro stockies or otherwise and give me one incident that defined that film for you in terms of what this job meant i think i think i can talk about kadal okay because kadal's climax is set in a uh in a ship that's caught in the right. storm right and you actually waited for the uh, i mean you had that cyclone uh, happening right yeah. you know and to execute that we had uh, so many options uh we scouted uh, for, for places in thailand we were planning to take it to europe and we were planning to build a set interiors and it was in a, chennai yeah and it was a complicated uh, decision because uh, there were so many requirements with in terms of action in terms of rain in terms of visual effects and in terms of permission from navy and everything so how we arrived at that and eventually turned out to be the most logical way of doing things so we got everything right. the uh, we, we got it done and the right season in the right weather the ship size was correct all the engineering elements that go with it to lift the ship yeah, and the to, to be yeah, and all the water splashing mechanisms everything worked out really well and the day to day operation of that so it was a tough one and Wh- to, where did it actually happen in uh, north madras okay so to to actually get that done to understand what the art director intends to do what the stunt team wants what the dop wants what the vfx team wants what the actors need and what are the cops saying in terms of bringing water lorries and right. and, and what will the fishing community say to put all of that together and get that shoot done that was the best thing and and that gave me the clarity that this is actually the ep's job okay. to to be in touch with each hod and you know and making sure they get what they want and also getting the director's vision executed intact okay so just that very that climax scene tell me one thing that each of these people wanted like dop rajiv what did rajiv say he wanted like any one thing just to get an idea of of the of the variables you're dealing with yeah no, actually uh, see we have a wave breaker in north madras so that kind of creates this uh, artificial harbor okay where they bring in all these large fishing boats for repair that's where we shot that uh, sequence So the problem that the DOP had was wherever he placed the camera he could see the wave breaker okay and he would see hundreds of fishing boats uh-huh. in the frame so it was our job to keep the frame clean not just in one angle but in 270 degrees so there was one angle which he was never going to shoot so we had to keep everything here so we had to prepare the fishermen well in advance to hide their boats away for us to shoot that's one of his requirements the stunt director wanted cables to be done there for the action to take place now you have the high tide low tide situation where the boat could be slightly above the jetty sometime in the day and then about 10 feet below so how do you keep this thing going so we had to have other boats around that would carry this then the big deal was carry the cable yeah carry the cable and the big deal was all the water tippers so you have these huge water tippers with the slides they were built by the production designer especially for that sequence how do you fill water there and it had to be good this is to, to pour water from above yeah to yeah. create the waves right on the right. deck right. so how do you get the water over there so if you bring in a water tanker it can't stay for more than 5 minutes and the jetty is so narrow so where will the cameras go when it comes so you got to time all of this 
So and when the water is used for the shots, I got two guys who climb up and tell me how much water is left so I can time the next lorry to come in. So it's a physical job, but it's also something that you need to be aware of uh, when you take up this job. It's not a, uh, it's a, it's a blue collar job. You got to sweat it out. And, and uh. you keep checking with your director about how many shots he intends to take and roughly how many takes it will be. So I can order for more tankers or not, you know, like that, you know, it's, it's, it's a real can, can somebody say in advance how many takes they would need? You can't, but you can guess because you know your director's style and you know what the action is. That's why I think an EP should have a good no, grip the, on the script. Yeah, yeah. Has there been a peaceful EP job, let's say OK Company, which was... I didn't, I was not the EP. You were not the EP on that? Okay. I was, I just acted in it. Yeah. Has there been something that was small scale? contained, which was relatively, uh, was Surma that project? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was uh, shot predominantly in uh, Shabad and we had one schedule abroad, otherwise it was uh, all in Haryana and Punjab. So. And, and fairly uncomplicated yeah. in terms of, because hockey… No, yeah. hockey was complicated. Okay. Other than other than hockey, everything else was. Uh, Why was uh, the hockey complicated? Schedule. Because you uh, you don't have hockey players, right? They're actors. How do you get them to uh, play? So all the hockey training and the hockey stadiums and when to use the real hockey action or when to simulate it and create the ball in VFX. Those, those decisions. Those decisions. Uh, because they were, that they, also they, adds to the budget, right? Correct. Yeah. And and you got different teams uh, in different scenes. You got uh, an Argentine team and. Uh, a uh, French team and a Pakistani team, how do you cast them? How right. do you bring them and their uniforms for that period? So, it's it's regular filmmaking. I'm not saying it's difficult, yeah, yeah. but but that's a slightly interesting part, I would say. I mean, if everything is so tailor-made and you won't yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, you won't yeah, like the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. That was probably the, the easier film. So, you like the job? Yeah. Do you want to go back to directing someday? Um, of course. I mean, uh, is it, would, would, that, would that mean that uh, like because you've kind of become so specialist, like such a specialist in the zone, mm -hmm. would you feel that now, like it gives you this thrill to be able to execute these, these enormous logistical? I I, I don't think these two jobs are mutually, mutually exclusive. exclusive. Not okay. at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Okay. Not at all. So because I keep writing also. So right. So you know, before I leave you, I've got to ask you about this mammoth project that you're going to. You said you're working on right now, and uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, you just said that. Okay. What did you say? So, what is like apart from the fact that it's a period film, and apart from the fact that it involves like you know things like obviously the costumes are going to be different and everything like that. What are the logistical things that that uh, I can't talk about it because no, I'm right in the middle of it. <laughs> right, I know you can't right, talk I, about it, but but is that I don't want to jinx it. Okay, you know what I mean. Okay. I, I I just want to make sure it goes well. And okay, okay. So there is. You know, you but you're you're saying that it's the most complicated project. For sure, yeah. Okay. Is it because it's two films, or is it just the the nature of the project? Yeah, nature of the project. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. leave you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Shiva. Thanks, very Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shiva Anand. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel Film Companion South.